Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing a video where I react to your memory timings, because I need low effort content, because some relatively high effort stuff that I'm, that I've worked on wasn't, isn't quite going the way I was hoping it would. And so here we are, um, doing reaction videos, except unlike most other tech YouTube channels which do reacting to setups, I don't really care about your normie gaming setup. Um, but even normies can have good memory timings, at least in theory. So we'll see um, if anybody has good memory timings. So yeah, I made a Twitter thread for people to post their timings. Um, just screenshots. If you didn't post a screenshot, you didn't make it. Um, and I've sort of selected a few kind of randomly. And we'll see how many I make it through without making the video like an hour long. Because one of the early attempts ended up an hour long, which was like not not intentional. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this through Twitter is because you can't actually post images to YouTube or links. Fun fact. Like if you po try to post a link to YouTube and your comment gets deleted, it's because you tried to post a link. Like I've gotten myself deleted that way as well. Like I tried to comment a link to some resources on somebody's overclocking video and yeah that comment didn't make it make it through because youtube auto removes all links except if i put like i can post links to on my own videos but if you try to post links onto other people's videos yeah that doesn't work as far as i can tell anyway uh so yeah i'm, I'm doing it through twitter because i'm not really aware of a better way to do this anyway let's get into it starting off with uh these timings over here and let's zoom out a bit so we've got an Intel system, um, which is nice, because most of the other screenshots are from Ryzen systems, so <laughs> it'll get very boring very fast. Uh, Vi 4x8 Vipers on Z690. Yeah, the problem with this is I've really not done any 4x8 DDR4 testing on Z690, uh, so I don't really have any good advice to give, because I have zero experience. Um, so, like, I'm... or. I have zero experience with what kind of difficulties you could run into with a two with a four by eight setup compared to two by sixteen or uh, two by eight. Um, anyway, that latency looks okay. Um, running four thousand megabits per second, so yeah, that that looks fine. I am not sure why the TRP is at eighteen. That that's super weird. This is Samsung B die. You shouldn't have to like there's. Yeah, TRP, this is weird. Like, flat 17s, I'd get that. Maybe 17, 16, 16, or maybe, like, 17, 17, 16, even. I'd get that. But, set, like, 18? That doesn't make any sense. Like, TRP goes low on, like, especially on b die, it can go very low. Um, like, it can often go two ticks below cast latency. Um, so, yeah, this, this is super weird that, like, I don't think this is, like, a, th this doesn't look like a stability thing to me. This this just looks like, like, this this kind of looks like you don't know what you're doing, I'm guessing. Which, uh, yeah, considering you tried to copy my timings, I'm going to go with you just sort of raised a bunch of things for no apparent reason. Um, so TRP should definitely be able to go lower. TRAS 36, I there's not really any reason to have it at 36. I would... 28 should work. TRFC 300, that's fine. TREFI 40,000, that's fine. TWR 13. I have no idea why it would be 13, like why 13 would work and 12 wouldn't. Um, so I'd try set that to 12. WTRs aren't real. RRDs. Um, potentially like five, like four, four, maybe not working on four by eight is possible. So I instead, but I would have tried like four, five instead of five, five, like five, five doesn't make a ton of sense. T4 18 doesn't make sense at all, especially if you're running five, five that like if with five, five, your T4 is effectively 20. Um, so I'd set like TR, I'd set four, five with a 16 for T4 here. TRP, seven actually not necessarily a bad idea like six can sometimes cause issue in my issues in my experience tcwl 17 can probably be 16 but honestly the performance difference probably won't be that big so you don't have to bother tck5 no reason to not have that at four um and then the tear cherries so the tear cherries are sort of where four by eight is most likely to differ from two by eight and two by sixteen because uh four by eight uses the dd underscore dd timings um, and those are whack here, because that, that's a 10. Um, yeah, that's that's bad. Uh, I would assume you should, like, you should be able to run, like, 7, 4, 7, 7. 
or 7488. Um, yeah, because evidently, like, 74 works for you, so 7488 or 7477 should work. Honestly, even, like, 7466 might be doable. Um, and I would definitely try 7488 or 7477. Um, and then for right to rights, we have the same thing, like 7499, which is like, uh, I, I just try 7477 or 7488 again. Uh, then the read to rights are like, w what is this? Why is that 16? Especially with TCWL 17. So the read to write timing on some platforms, and I'm not sure if it's specific to certain memory chips, but with BDI, it can happen that you can trade cast write latency for read to write, uh, read to write delay. Um, and so, but your cast write latency is like super high. So you're, you're, read to write delays should be able to go as low as they go. So I would assume like flat 12s right here is what I like. I'd just expect 12, 12, 12 for that. Um, right to write, uh, right to read same group 32. That's like four ticks above normal or four ticks above what I usually use. And this is 26. So that's like two ticks above what I usually use. So these two, these two are, aren't really a huge, like those, those aren't, those aren't gr like, they're not minimized, but I wouldn't really like I wouldn't mind too much having them at 32 and 26. So yeah, that's that's sort of my reaction there is just like yeah, this it's not so this isn't this isn't that great. Also, are you running memtest with the e cores turned on? That doesn't work by the way. Like if you have the e cores turned on, memtest runs super yeah. It runs like really not great. Like what the that's probably the biggest annoyance I have with the e cores is how they completely screw up all memory stress tests. Um, so yeah, um, I'd turn off the e cores and try the timings. You can turn them back on after you run your memory stress test, but it's like while running the memory stress test, you probably want to turn them off. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, so that's, that's reaction number one. Not really a reaction. Like, the thing is, this isn't really going to be reaction content. It's basically me going to be, like, adjusting your timings for you. Rubbish, JDEX, SpecTech, OCing experience, feed transcend, jet RAM. Okay, um, SpecTech. So some kind of Micron rebrand, um, and the timings definitely reflect that. How much voltage is this? 1.4. Oh, man. The thing is, like, rebranded Micron, like, Micron had some really terrible memory chips. Like, they had 8 gigabit Rev B, which is horrendous. In fact, this kind of looks like it could be 8 gigabit Rev B. I've also heard that the successor to Rev E is terrible. Like, Rev F, 8 gigabit, is t awful, apparently. I've also heard that 16, uh, there might be a 16 gigabit Rev C, which also might be absolutely horrendous. So... Yeah, Micron has some newer memory chips that are absolutely terrible, and they certainly had older memory chips were, which were trash. So this right here... Yeah, if this is 8 gigabit B, then this really doesn't surprise me. In fact, this is actually pretty good TRCD for 8 gigabit Rev B. Um, it should be able to do, do low TRP, though, and TRFC on it shouldn't be able, shouldn't be too bad. I guess it could also be absolutely atrocious Rev E, but this would have to be some of the worst Rev E I've ever seen. Um, then again, it, like, and, and again, it's not on a crucial memory kit, so that could have something to do with the timings. Oh, well. Um, but you, you are getting gear download disabled in 1T command, right? So that's not, like, that's, that's kind of nice. Um... SCLs should be able to do four, pretty much regardless of what memory you have. So yeah, SCLs should be able to do four. RTP should be able to go lower. TRRDs, I would definitely try TRRDs at four. TRRDL might be a struggle. TFAW, try, try 16. Like, I, I would always, like, TFAW, like, basically, um, like, there are situations in which having a high, like, a sort of, like, a higher TFAW can make sense, but... Your TR, like, your TFAW is so high that effectively your TRRDS is non-functional. I honestly don't know why, like, this actually looks like it's on auto. I'm guessing this is on auto. WTRs look very auto as well. I'd try, yeah, I'd try, like, four, leave the nine alone, like, I'd potentially leave the nine alone. 
Um, T4, I would try like I try and drop it all the way to 16. Because the thing is, if you get four long activates back to back, they're gonna take 36 clock cycles anyway. So, yeah. Whereas if you get sh four short ones, those will take 16. And so having T4 at 16 for sh like short activates will give you max performance. Um, anyway, WTRs I'd try 48. TWR 10. Um, yeah. Or actually, for WTRs, I'd probably try 412, and WTR, I'd, I'd try 10. TRFC looks like you've actually probably maxed it out for this. So, yeah, though I'm not sure what memory this is, so that's kind of hard. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, like, most of this is auto, though. I w should note that messing with the TRRDs on some Micron memory can sometimes make really annoying like late into the memory stress test errors like you get like one error every hundred percent which is super frustrating and is the main reason why when i was dailying micron on my daily when i was dailying micron sticks i actually had auto trrds because i couldn't get it to stop erroring like way late into the memory stress test and i just gave up on that um Anyway, next timings. We've got uh, couldn't get below 21 TRC DRD, and the rest is basically just me being too lazy to fine-tune much. Okay, well, let's see what that looks like. Got a 5700G at 4200 megabits per second. Dual rank. Uh, yeah, dual rank, because we've got 8 gig DIMMs, SR, so 4x8. On a B550A Aorus Pro. So the thing is, with the Ryzen APUs, you should generally be aiming for, like... Like, above this, like, FCLK should do 2200 on pretty much any APU. Um, and then, if you have a good one, you can even sometimes do, like, 2300 or 2400 FCLK. Um, so, yeah, this is definitely not maxing out the FCLK, and that, that helps with memory latency. So, basically, I would try to retune this for a higher memory speed. Like, I'd try to do 4400 megabits per second with FCLK of 2200. Um, other than that, this looks like everything is on auto, so if you're expecting me to give you intelligent criticism on auto settings, then it's like, they on auto. <laughs> so, that's, that's like, what do you expect? Um, yeah, but if you, like, here's the thing, if you're gonna leave the settings on auto, then just raising the data rate is an effective way of increasing performance, because you do get more memory bandwidth, and the higher FCLK lowers your memory latency. Though with dual rank setups, getting 4,400 megabits per second working might be kind of difficult. Um, yeah. You might really, like, you'll probably have to really dial in your termination and drive strength settings, but it looks like you're already off to a good start on those, so... Yeah, I would definitely try to go for, like, 2200 FCLK or higher. Like, even 4533 megabits per second with uh, 2266 FCLK should be very easy. To, should be relatively easy to do. Um, anyway, so that's kind of that. Next one, we've got... Uh, how much time did that take? That's 13 minutes. Okay, we're doing, we're doing pretty good. So we've got Micron Rev E OC to 3200 on a Zen Plus. Yeah, looks good. Though, on a Zen Plus, you should be able... Like, honestly, with Rev E, you can do 3600 on Zen Plus. And again, that'll bring down... That'll bring up your FCLK clock, and that'll improve your memory latency, because the thing is, memory latency has multiple parts to it. And on Ryzen CPUs, the part where the data actually goes from the memory controller to the cores uh, takes a while. So high FCLK is really good for reducing your memory latency, even if you end up with absolutely horrendous primary timings, because the data, like the data arriving at the memory controller quickly, is is great and all, but it still needs to get to the actual cores, and that happens using the FCLK. So I would basically, like you're on a B450M, you're on single rank, yeah, I would totally try to retune this for 3600 megabits per second. And by retune, I mean I would basically loosen this out to like 18, 20, 20, 20, and see, see like it should probably do 3600 at that point. Um, you might have to loosen out your TRRDs. Uh, SCLs should do fours, maybe even twos. And TWR should be able to go lower as well. TCKE, you should be able to minimize TCKE as well. That's the timing I think I skipped in the last one, didn't I? Oh no, this guy had it at one, yeah. Um, so, there, TRFC, you're probably... Actually, that kind of looks like auto TRFC for 3200. So that might be on auto. Yeah, I would really try to push this up to 3600. Um, 
Next we have dual rank B-Dai, probably held back by the motherboard, can't even do one T, no gear down mode. Well, this is generally very difficult to do. Um, also, I have noticed that one T command rate does seem to be relatively sensitive to the PCB of the memory sticks. Like, I have some memory sticks will absolutely will not do one T command rate. So, um, or really struggle with it on like a very large variety of boards um, at higher speeds. So this might like b 550 m mortar. I'm not sure. I like I would. Well, it could be board limited. It could be mother. It could be memory limited. That that one's. But also, I wouldn't stress about it. I like personally. I just use gear down mode. I can't be bothered with figuring out how to set up the terminations and the drive strengths to get one T command rate. Like if it if it doesn't work by just lowering the command drive strength to twenty, then I don't bother. <laughs> it really is that simple. It's just like oh, it doesn't immediately work. Give up. Because um, the performance difference isn't big enough to be worth the effort as far as I'm concerned. Especially not for daily. Um, maybe for benchmarking I'd put the effort in, but otherwise no. Uh, anyway, my bigger criticism here is uh, you're at flat 14s. I can't imagine that you couldn't do 3800 if you just loosened out the primaries. Like, I've done 3800 on 16 gig dims on, like, freaking B450 motherboards. So, you're probably just asking the memory, and yeah, you're probably just asking too much of the memory kit with those flat 14s. Like, the vast majority of B-Die in my collection doesn't do for TRCD 14 at 3800. Like, it just doesn't do that. Um, so, yeah, not, like, properly stable anyway, so... That's kind of that, that, yeah, like I would, I would probably try to push this for 3800 because again, with Ryzen, you really do want to max out your FCLK. Other than that, the timings look good, right? Like we've got, like if we ignore the fact that this is running at what I would consider a relatively low clock, um, and it is worth noting that going from 3600 to 3800 isn't really going to be like, you know, life-changing performance differences, but... If you're going to have timings that look like this, I feel like you, you could, you know, actually max out your FCLK since evidently you put way too much effort into your sub timings. Uh, for, yeah, so 14, good, 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 good. TRAS 28, good. TRC 42, good. Actually, can probably go lower on that. TRDs 4, 4, good. Like, it literally doesn't get better than 4, 4. TFAW 16 doesn't get, be doesn't get better. WTRs 4, 8, good. TWR 10, good. Uh, TRFC 238, that looks totally minimized. I I don't usually bother with that. T SCLs 4.4, 4, good. TCWL 12, good. T RTP 6, good. RDWR 10, good. Uh, WRD 2, good. And then tertiaries, we're just going to skip those. Actually, 4.4, 4, 6, 6, yeah, good. TCKE 1, good. Yeah, like, all good. Now, just, like, you know, more faster. <laughs> anyway... Next settings, uh, we've got a interest in having Intel memory latency checker closest to 30 nanoseconds. I'm pretty sure it's bugged out on Ryzen CPUs. And stuff like pushing memory to the maximum, but even if I have 8 hours test mem, 5 variety of tests, 0 0.1 frame times, which make games smoother, go... Uh, yeah. Um... Also, it's 0.1%, not 0.01%, because 0.01% of frames would be every 10,000 frames, which at, uh, what, like 60 FPS is a slow frame every... We're going to pull up the calculator. It's a slow frame almost every two min. Like, that's more than two minutes between stutters. If you're getting stutters every two minutes, I think that's more of, like, a game engine thing than it is, like, your memory settings thing. Um, yeah. Though I guess it could also be instability. Potentially. In which case, maybe run your memory stress test with Furmark on the GPU. Um, and be careful with Furmark because it does have a tendency to blow up badly built graphics cards. And as far as I'm concerned, it is badly built graphics cards. Like your GPU should have built in safety features to prevent itself, prevent it from killing itself. Anyway, we've got another one of these hell bent on having 14s, but can't run high FCLK settings. 
Uh, also, this is not how that works. Auto gives 24, I assume. Yes, auto is 24. Low voltage can use low resistance can mean seat cleaner signal. No, because these are drive strengths. The idea behind all of these different resistances is that you're basically trying to match the impedance of the motherboard and the memory chips and the memory sticks and the CPU. Um, and you're just trying to match them all. Because if there's a good match between the impedances of all these things, you don't get signals like reflecting on the transition between the motherboard and the memory stick or the memory stick and the memory chip because the, the memory chip is a thing on the memory stick, right? So every time the signal has to uh, transition from what like one thing to another thing, um, if there's a big difference in impedance, it'll cause a reflection. Um, and that reflection will then basically make whatever signal is trying, like whatever other signal is at the, at that point on the on the trace, it's going to distort that signal. Um, and so basically, with the drive strength, like the default twenty four ohms works great, except for well, a lot of the time it works fine. Sometimes I've found that like running CLK at twenty can help, or running command rate at twenty can help. Um, I've also seen people use, like, CLK drive strength at 40 ohms, uh, for some memory chips. Um, and it has nothing to really do with what voltage you're using, if any... Yeah, it doesn't really have much of anything to do with what voltage you're using, and everything to do with the physical properties of your motherboard and memory sticks. And memory chips. Um, and to some extent, like, the technically, to some extent, the voltage would also have an impact, but like not really um and it definitely like and low voltage using low resistance like it isn't a fixed relationship like low voltage low resistance is so yeah no just like set like honestly if you're gonna come up with silly rules like this just use the auto values um you even have gear down mode enabled. Yeah, just use freaking auto. Like, it's not like you're trying to do 1T command rate without gear down, so... Just auto. Like, I've I've literally never bothered to set my drive strengths manually, except when I've been trying to get gear down disabled with 1T command rate. Because in 2T, again, it doesn't matter. Um, other than that, the timings themselves are good, 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 TRC, good, 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 uh, yeah, all good. I'm surprised the SCLs aren't twos, considering, like, yeah, in my experience, if threes work, then twos probably work too, but, yeah, all the timings are good. This is dumb. Like, this, this, it doesn't work like that, so that's just straight up dumb. Um, and then... I would still try to run, like, I would loosen out the primaries, try to go higher memory speed, higher FCLK, and also I would potentially run the stress test with load on the GPU. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, next, how much time do we have left? Okay, we're at 23 minutes, we can keep going. Uh, Titus, it went, pardon the crop. Oh man, this one's cool. We've got a Ryzen 7 1700 with Micron 4 gigabit rev f yeah 4 gigabit revision f memory chips so those are low load memory chips i think they're they're probably they might be some weird like they're probably relatively similar to rev e except they do like lower yeah they do better trfc which probably is just a density uh thing but anyways these are low load on the memory controller and those for like the thing a lot of people don't realize is, like, the first-gen chips can actually do very high FCLK if you have, like, if you don't put too much stress on the absolutely atrocious memory controllers they come with. So, something like this, yeah, 3933, 1966, like, yeah, this this is cool. Um, those SCLs are atrocious, though. Like I, like, I wonder if they're limited to that, or... If he just left them on auto, because on auto that like yeah that that looks auto, very auto, um, and we've got an ITX motherboard of course because one DIM per channel is probably the only way this CPU is doing that. Even then, that has to be a strong memory controller because a, a lot of the first gen chips like even with a one DIM per channel motherboard and low load memory sticks, um, 
or more like low load memory chips will uh, still top out. Because I don't want to, because the thing is that technically there are load reduced DIMMs for servers, which are a very different thing. Um, not to be mixed up with like low load memory chips, which really is just like a description of the physical properties of the memory chip. Um, like VDI is a high load memory chip because it just generally is very difficult to clock high, even though it is like the chip itself can do those speeds. It's just that like, I'm, I'm assuming it either takes too much energy to send a signal to it reliably or to receive a signal to, from it reliably. One of the two. Probably send it, but anyway, that doesn't matter. It might even be clock. Um, but yeah, so it's like like how much load a memory chip has is like a physical property of, of its I.O. portion. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so even that, like, so even... Uh, so a lot of 1700s will probably not do 3933, even if you do, like, optimal conditions. But I think the best first gen I've heard of was, like, 4000 or maybe 4066. Maybe even 4200, but, like, one stick. Um, so, yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. Like, the timings, especially the SCLs, don't look optimized, but TRRDs are good. Tfa atro actually no okay look if you're gonna run four six for your activates and then your four active window is gonna be forty two you're just wasting your time because your four like so the way the four active window works is basically so RRD timings or activate timings and basically they set how much time it there can be between activate commands um, and the four active window acts as an extension on top of the activate uh, delays. So if you have a TRD, a short, uh, a short TRD of four, so that's the TRD S. The S stands for short. Um, then four act, four short activate commands back to back will take sixteen clock cycles. But if your four active window is forty two, then you're you're gonna like the CPU is gonna send four you know four activate commands in sixteen cycles, and then it's gonna wait for twenty six cycles so that it reaches that four active window of forty two. So four six forty two is functionally the same as if you were running like seven seven forty two, right? Because uh, four long cycle like four long activates would be twenty four cycles. Four short activates are sixteen cycles. And so in both scenarios, like the memory controller is just going to like sit there twiddling its thumbs for like 20 plus clock cycles because um, the first, like the activates finish too quickly back to back, like are running really quickly back to back. So the, the default, like, like the thing is like, yeah, this doesn't have anything. Like the funny thing is this doesn't have any real negative impact on your stability. It's just like performance wise, this doesn't do anything like TRRDs of 4.6 with a TFAW of 42 is, like, functionally the same as if you were running, like, 7.7.42. Almost, almost. There's a little bit of efficiency, so I may maybe would be more like running uh, 6.7? Wait, no, 7 times 4 is 28. I suck at math. So, actually, no, this is, like, running 9.9.42. Yeah, this is basically like having TRRDs of 9.9, because 9.9 would be, like, 36. So, that's actually maybe even 10s. Um, yeah, like, this doesn't make sense. Don't, don't have your TFA at 42 if you're going to run TRD, or more like, like, try to lower it, because if your TFA is at 42, you, the, like, all those, like, all those clock cycles you saved on your TRDs are just getting wasted by the four active window. Um, so, yeah, don't, don't, don't set your time. Well, like, the thing is, it's not a stability thing. In fact, if he tightens that four active window, it might start getting, a, like, it might end up being unstable. But the thing is, like, tightening your TRDs without touching the four active window achieves absolutely freaking nothing. Right? Like, unless your TRDs are longer than the activate, wi the, the four activate window, doing this is utterly pointless. It is stable, though. Like, it'll be stable, but yeah, performance wise, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, next. Uh, settings, we've got, uh, Micron 8 gigabit Rev E. I, this, I, this is my preferred notation for memory chips when talking quickly. Also, what I've started doing is putting a 4 or a 5 at the start to indicate which generation. So, like, DDR4 would be, DDR4 8 gigabit Micron would be, like, 4, M, 8, and then whatever revision, uh, letter revision it is. 
Um, or Samsung would be like, so Samsung B die would be like 4S8B. Um, much faster than saying Samsung B die. Well, uh, much fa faster than typing Samsung B die. Saying Samsung B die is faster than saying S, uh, 4S8, uh, 4S8B. Actually, no, it isn't. I'm pretty sure, like, if you got used to it, I feel like you could say it faster, but you'd confuse everyone, so that wouldn't be very effective. Anyway, 1.55 volts, that's perfectly fine. Uh, 5600X, that's a lot of FCLK. 141815, good. Um, I have my doubt, like, the, the, anytime I see more than 1900 FCLK, I wonder about how, like, how stable it is. Though, apparently, the... F single CCD chips might be a bit better at this than the two CCD chips. My 5950X absolutely will not do over 1900 FCLK without performance regressions. And it's not like it's spitting out piles of uh, hardware errors. Like, it just starts slowing down in stress, like, in memory stress, uh, not memory stress test, like, LinPack. It starts slowing, slowing down in things like LinPack because LinPack absolutely slams the memory controller. So, and the Infinity Fabric by extension. And so the, like, errors that start showing up on the Infinity Fabric when it goes too fast make Linpack slow down. Um, it doesn't actually make it error. It just slows it down because the CPU seems to have some, like, the 5000 series seems to basically have some kind of error correction for the Infinity Fabric. But, yeah, anyway, um, the timings themselves are 14, 18, 15, good. TRAS 21, that is surprising. Oh, well, TRC 56, so that doesn't really... Yeah, um, well, so that, like, typical Micron Rev E TRC right there. This is on dual rank. That's impressive. Um, 4, 4, 16, nice. 3, 7, nice. TWR 16, fine. TRFC 590, cool. Yeah, that's like a 3933, nice. Uh, SCLs 4, 4, good. And then everything else, yeah, like good. Just 4, 4, 6, 6, yeah, TCK1, everything good. And with gear down mode disabled and 1T command rate, and you can see command drive strength set to 20 ohms. Um, which, yeah, that is apparently on a lot of, in a lot of scenarios that can work in a lot of, also sometimes it won't achieve anything for disabling gear down mode in 1T and keeping 1T command rate. But yeah, a lot of the time, this is basically the number one thing to do relatively high proc ODT, but proc ODT again, it like, there's not a, this is always the best proc ODT type thing. The proc ODT depends on your motherboard your memory sticks, the memory chips on those memory sticks, how many memory sticks you have, right? And so evidently for this dual rank configuration on an Asus board, uh, 48 ohm proc ODT seems to be working best because like it's passing mem test. Yeah, so this looks good. Um, I have my, like, I have my doubts about the FCLK, but the rest of it, like this looks good. So um, yeah, like the, the actual memory overclock itself, I have nothing to complain about. The Infinity Fabric, I, I, you know, I'm not sure. Like, the thing is, I don't have, I, I've not tested a lot of Ryzen 5000 series chips, so I really don't know um, how viable it is to do over 1900 FCLK. Because um, in my experience, it's impossible. It just doesn't work on my 5950X, no matter what I do. Anyway, uh, next we have Black Dot and his uh, daily on a Unify X. And this, yeah, I this this right here is goals. Th this is literally goals for your DDR5 settings. So Unify X, obviously one DIMM per channel board. And we've got 6,800 megabits per second. Gear 2, of course. Command rate 2. Um, which I'm not sure more than... Like for 6,800, you're not doing 1T. I, don't, I really don't think you're doing 1T on any motherboard. Um, unless maybe you... on Maybe on liquid nitrogen, but on ambient, no. Um... Also, these have to be some really strong dims because CL28 at 6,800 megabits per second with just 1.5 volts of, well, 1.51, uh, like 1.52 VDD and 1.47 VDDQ on the memory is like, that's ridiculous. Um, and then the actual CPU VDDQ of 1.25. Yeah, this, this voltage is so weird on Asus boards because on Asus boards, you need to set it like insanely high and everywhere else, it's really not necessary. Um, and then VDD2. VDD2 is wacky because it's sweet spots on like everything except gigabyte motherboards. On gigabyte motherboards, you can basically run whatever VDD2 you want. 
which is kind of weird. Um, or actually, you need a lot of the time. You need a ton of EDD too. Um, but uh, luckily, like there's no there's no like safety issue with that because the VDD two is just used for the for communicating to the actual memory chips. Like it replaces the old VDDR rail. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't like I wouldn't like this is extremely safe for VDD two, but also like depending on the motherboard, this might actually be like the best possible VDD two setting, depending also what memory settings you're running. Um, and memory, yeah, one point five two, one point four seven. So yeah, like this is a really strong kit of memory because on like my sticks will not post CL twenty eight with that those voltage settings at all, um, regardless of what board I use. At sixty eight hundred, at like. I think at like 6400 it would work, but at 6800 no. Um, TCK4 tear cherry. Oh yeah, his t the black dots tear cherries are just great. Like 11, 7, it doesn't get better than that. 1919. So well, I don't think you can be fully stable with less than 1919. Um, you can run benchmarks at like 1818 sometimes, but or maybe even 1717. But yeah, like that's that's tight. 5644. It doesn't get better than that. Uh, and then the right to right same group of nine. I didn't even know this would be like post like this can post. Um, so that's really cool that you can do nine seven. I have that yeah, that's just really, really cool. TWR twelve, uh TRFC two three ten, TRFC per bank two sixty, good, TRD long six, TRD short four, good, WTRs are not a thing on Intel CPUs. RTP 11, kind of loose. Uh, TFOS 16, good. TCWL 28, good. Uh, and I'm not going to comment on the RTLs because I actually don't know if those are good. Well, like, they they are even. Like, there's no crazy spread between them. So that's a good indicator that it will be stable. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if they're actually good or not because uh, I don't really pay it too much attention to them most of the time. Anyway, and apparently it runs absolutely bloody everything. So... Yeah, this this is one hell of a memory kit, and then of course the Unify X is one hell of a board, so that's cool. And next, uh, how many? How much time? We're at thirty-seven minutes. Uh, do I? How many? Uh, well, let's do this one because I I have some cho I, like I stumbled across this one, and I have some complaints. So, um, I like I did have to go through and pick these. So. Somewhat randomly, but like I, I do know what's coming up. So anyway, started out with a 4400 CL1916 gig Patriot Viper kit and then upgraded to a... No, 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 no. You side graded to a 4400 CL16 G skill kit. Royal Silver. W was able to lower cast latency, TRCD, TRP, and TRFC. Ah, yes. Um, that made such a performance difference. Like... Unfortunately, IMC is trash, so nothing below 15 is stable for TRDWR. Let's see what TCWL is he's at. Okay, yeah. That, that makes sense. Um, so, I have one issue with this, which is that dual rank B die absolutely demolish, or more like dual rank demolishes single rank. Like, super hard. And this guy, like, he has a 4-DIM motherboard. This is a Z490 Gaming Plus. This board's got 4-DIM slots on it. It would have cost much less to buy a second Viper kit. Honestly, I wouldn't have even been mad if he just kept the Viper kit and then added the G-Skill kit to it. Like, that would have made more sense than what he actually ended up doing, which is replacing a Viper kit with a... Like, replacing a single-rank B-Die kit with a more expensive single-rank B-Die kit which achieves basically nothing because previously, so th those C19 sticks, those were probably running, I'm guessing like 16, 17, 17 with a TRFC of 300 instead of 265, <laughs> which is like, okay, so you save yourself 30, what? No, uh, 35 cycles of TRFC. So your refresh cycle is what? Like 10% shorter. Great. You know, that really, that totally worth, worth the, the cost. Like, I'm, a, I'm hoping that's not too expensive. Right, let's look it up. Let's look it up. Oh, man. Um, I'm, I, I'm, because the thing is, like, this is, 
Don't do this. Do not go from a single rank B die kit to another single rank B die kit. That is like the, especially not a more expensive, actually, no, just in general, unless you're doing like Geekbench, don't do that. Because it's super, like, it's so cost ineffective to do that. It's insane. Like, I have no idea why you would ever do a side grade like that. Unless you're into competitive benchmarking and your favorite two benchmarks are like Super Pi 32 million and uh, Geekbench 3. Because for those two, on. Uh, but then you should have an Apex. Why do you. <laughs> like, literally makes zero sense. 4400 CL16. This better not be... Oh, at least it's not outrageously expensive. Wait, no, he bought this in Royals. So it probably is outrageously expensive, because the Royals are generally very expensive. Um, DDR4. No, those are 2x16. We want 2x8 Royals. And... Oh no, these are 3200. Buy, don't buy that either. Especially for 100 bucks. Sixteen speed forty four hundred. Oof, literally like just oof. That is all I can say. If just no, like the, no, don't do this. Don't spend two hundred and twenty four dollars on a single rank memory kit as an upgrade for your existing single rank memory kit. It is a waste of time and effort. Like, unless you're doing Geekbench 3. Because there are, like, in... You know, if you're doing competitive overclocking, there are certain benchmarks that just love speed. Um, and don't care about actual, like, real-world performance. Like Geekbench 3. And IDA's bench bandwidth test. And also the IDA latency test, for that matter. Um, and so in that scenario, it can make sense to get, like, a super high bin single rank kit because it increases the probability that you'll be able to do, like, 4800 CL14 or something at 2 volts-ish. But for daily, sing dual rank has a absolutely disgusting per, per like, for every, just per clock performance advantage. So this makes zero sense, especially since he's still at 2T command rate. Like, like, yeah, this, this just doesn't make any sense. Do not do this. This is a terrible purchasing decision, unless you're into, you know, Geekbench 3 rankings. Um, like... Like, going from any single rank kit to any other single rank... Well, I guess if you're going from, like, Hynix AFR to b die, then, yeah, that's an upgrade. Um, that that would still be a proper upgrade. But going from single rank b die to single rank b die is just... So you can slightly lower your primaries and your TRFC is just so freaking... Pointless. It is so utterly pointless. You, like... Because here's the thing. Going from, like, single rank to dual rank, that can actually give you a rather significant performance difference, even if your timings get worse. Like, that's the crazy thing. Like, dual rank gives the memory... Because with dual rank, the memory controller just has the option to interleave even more operations than usual. Whereas with single rank, you're just kind of hoping that the things you're already doing in order can be done slightly faster. Um, like, multiple memory ranks are kind of like, kind of, not really, hyper-threading uh, for your memory. Um, and so, yeah, this, this right here, when I saw this, I wanted to, and I still want to just facepalm so hard. Because it's just, like, this is super dumb. I'm sorry. But this is just super dumb. Don't do this. Unless you're into Geekbench 3. Right? Or other competitive benchmarking. For daily, the basically, the for DDR4, the per memory performance progression is like 
random single ram like oh well no so at the very bottom we have one stick of ram single channel right you really don't want to be there then you've got your two sticks of ram like two sticks of random terrible ram dual channel uh then we have like two sticks of samsung b die dual like single rank samsung b die dual channel and then the peak of ddr4 performance is dual channel dual rank ddr4 that's it. That's the end game. It doesn't get faster than dual rank B die. It only gets slower. Now there are certain alternatives for like if you want high densities, you should probably be going like dual rank micron or Hynix because quad rank B die is a horrible thing to work with and there's basically no performance gains once you go like going from dual rank to like triple or quad rank just doesn't really have any performance gains cuz the memory controller is already interleaving about as much as it really can once you hit dual rank. And so adding another memory rank or another two memory ranks just doesn't really achieve anything while massively degrading the speeds you can run because it's so much harder to run all the, like to actually drive all those memory sticks. With DDR5, it's even sort of simpler. You have your single channel DDR5, which is horrible. Then you have dual channel like X16 DDR5. So those are eight gig DDR5 sticks. You should avoid those like the plague. They're terrible. They're basically DDR4 trying to pretend it's DDR5. Um, and then you get your single rank like X8 DDR5. And that's actually the stopping point for DDR5 performance because DDR5 uh, has as many bank groups in one memory rank as DDR4 has in two memory ranks. And the end result of that is that going from single rank to dual rank on DDR5 does pretty much, is about as effective as going from dual rank to quad rank on DDR4, which in other words is not really. It's not very effective at all. Um, and also going from one, like going from some very fast single rank RAM to slightly faster single rank RAM is a waste of time and effort. <laughs> so yeah, nice settings. But this is, like, from a performance per dollar perspective, this is super dumb. Like, we're, like honestly, if you still have that Viper kit, I think you'd be... be it, honestly, it's a good idea to just stick both kits into the system at the same time and work on a 4x8 configuration instead of a uh, 2x8. Because 4x8 is just going to demolish a 2x8 uh, setup. Even if you're at like 4,000 CL17, you're going to absolutely crush a 4,200 CL15 setup. Like it's not even going to be close in real world performance. It's like Ida's going to tell you that the 4,200 CL15 is better, but Ida's terrible. So anyway, um, let's end it here unless is the next set of timings interesting. Um, not really. Yeah, well, let's end it here. So that's it for the... Uh, I guess I want to do, the, uh, maybe we'll do multiple parts. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, my, that's it for the, the low effort reacting to, uh, people's memory timings, uh, video because it takes too long. <laughs> like there's too, so yeah, I guess there'll be a, maybe I'll do a part two. If you think this is good enough to get a part two, um, or if you think I should do this on like a semi-regular basis, we can do that. Um, I don't really have a problem with it. The main issue for me is just keeping the length down because memory timings are surprising, like very simple and surprisingly complicated at the same time. Um, yeah, I guess over time, the everybody will just sort of trend towards having good timings and I'll just get to go like, good, 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 as long as they don't do something dumb, like replacing a single rank kit with a different single rank kit. Um, anyway... Yeah, that that's that's it for the video. Let me know if you you know, leave comments, suggestions down in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe. Wait, I'm doing my intro out of order and this outro out of order and that is really screwing me over. Um, cuz I've just <laughs> Wait, so comments, yeah, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store. Uh, there's another link to that as well. Um, the Teespring store has, you know, uh, shirts, hoodies, uh, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it'd be much appreciated if you check them out. 
And that is it for the video, so thank you for watching and goodbye.